Hello, my name is Jerry Ratka and I'm a course developer in Juniper Networks Education Services Department. In this learning bite, we'll take a look at the initial setup of an AX411 wireless access point. Okay, the uh, Juniper Networks AX411 uh, access point is an 802.11n uh, access point backward compatible with uh, 802.11a, b, and g. And it's, uh, it's created for deployment in small to medium sized branch offices. Uh, the AX411 is fully managed by an SRX branch office device and you can manage up to uh, two AX411 access points with a branch office SRX by default. If you want to manage more than two AX411s off of a uh, SRX branch office device, you're going to have to uh, purchase uh, additional licenses. So first off, check the, uh, the table I'm showing at the bottom of the screen here to make sure that the model of SRX that you have uh, supports more than two. They all support two by default, but there's some that can support four. So make sure you got a, a model that can support four if you want to go that route. And if you do want to support four, again, you've got to buy additional licenses to do that. Okay, and I sh should also make a, a, a point here to say that uh, for larger deployments of more than four access points or where location services are going to be uh, desired, uh, the Juniper Network's WLA and WLC product line would be recommended. You notice all on the uh, the illustration I have here of the access point. It does come with uh, with rubber feet, and that is because uh, out of the box it's meant to be used on a a shelf or a desktop. But you can get uh, an optional wall or ceiling mount plate for the device. And showing here the uh, the screw that's used to attach those mounting plates to the uh, AX411. And again, that's optional. You would have to order those uh, separately. Also, the device does not come with uh, an AC power supply. There is a port on a device for connecting an AC power supply, but again, it's an option. If you want to use uh, an AC power supply, that's an additional item that you'll have to purchase. The 411 is uh, a PoE, a power over Ethernet powered device. So, you know, power would be through the, uh, through the Ethernet port on the device, shown here. And if you're going to uh, go the uh, power over Ethernet route, uh, make sure that the SRX that you're getting to manage the device is capable of PoE. And then we're also showing here the, uh, uh, the console port and the uh, security lock slot in case you want to uh, lock down the device. Also note that the device does not have an on-off switch. The device gets powered on or off by connecting or disconnecting the AC power supply or the uh, PoE connection uh, through the Ethernet port. On the top of the device, there is a, uh, an LED. There's actually four LEDs, and those are used for uh, status LEDs, and I'll explain those uh, a little bit more on the next slide. Okay, so here I'm showing a, a representation of the, of the four LEDs, which are located on the, uh, on the top of the device. Uh, the furthest back, the one you know, closest to the, uh, to the antennas on the back, would be the, uh, the power LED. And that one is going to be a steady green when power is being delivered to the device. The next LED is going to be the status LED. That one will also be a steady green to show that the device is being managed by an SRX. Uh, the next one is a, a 5 gigahertz radio LED. And that one will flash blue to show that the uh, 5 gigahertz radio is uh, enabled and broadcasting. And then the last one is a 2 gigahertz radio LED. This is a, a dual radio device. So when that one is flashing green, that, one, that will show that the uh, 2 gigahertz radio is enabled in, in broadcasting. Okay, so when you take the device out of the, out of the box, you're going to have to uh, install the three antennas. They just screw onto the back. Then you want to connect a Cat5 or, a, a, or I should say a Cat5e or a Cat6 cable from the Ethernet or Ethernet port on the AX411 to a PoE port. Or again, uh, purchase the uh, optional AC power supply if you're not using P uh, PoE. And once you do that, once you're supplying power through the uh, optional AC power supply or through PoE, uh, 
again, check the uh, the LEDs to make sure everything's functioning. They'll, they'll light up as soon as it starts getting uh, power. Okay, so now that everything is, is physically connected, uh, the next step, uh, what I'll do is I'll step out of this presentation and then we'll walk through uh, the initial setup of an AX411 using the CLI on an SRX210. And I should mention also, as I'm noting on the uh, text box in the lower corner of the screen here, is uh, the Junos OS release on the SRX has to be version 10.0 or later. So let's, uh, let's step out of this presentation and take a look at the CLI. Okay, so I've already counseled into uh, an SRX210, and I have an Ethernet cable connected from port GE001 uh, to the Ethernet port on the AX411. And as you can see, I'm, I'm logged into the SRX, and I'm uh, currently in configuration mode. Also, notice that when I, uh, when I logged in, it's telling us that we have Junos version 11.4 on the, this device, which is good because we do need Junos version 10.0 or higher. So the first thing we'll want to do, um, and this is a, a PoE version of an SRX, we're going to have to make sure that we have PoE enabled on the port that I'm using to uh, connect to the AX411. So let's use the uh, show PoE command. And if, if that gives you no response like we got here, that's telling us that none of the ports that are capable of providing PoE on this SRX are currently enabled to do so. So what we're going to want to do is, uh, is uh, set the PoE up on the SRX device, and we can use the set PoE interface command to do that. And a couple options we could do here is we could use the, uh, the all option and set maximum power for 12.4 watts because that is the, uh, the power draw for the AX411. That command will enable PoE on every port on this device that is uh, capable of PoE. Another option with the uh, set PoE interface command is to set PoE up just on a, a particular port. So in this case, I'll set PoE on uh, GE001, the port that I have connected to the uh, AX411 access point. And again, we'll do maximum power, 12.4 watts. Enter that command, and of course we have to commit it. Okay, now once that uh, commit succeeds, it's going to be set up, and we're going to start sending power from the uh, from the SRX to the AX411, and uh, you would see those uh, LEDs light up. Now, if one or more access points are connected to the built-in Ethernet ports on uh, the SRX, other than port GE000 and the ports are in factory default configuration, each access point will automatically obtain an IP address from the SRX using DHCP. Uh, and the SRX delivers a, a default configuration to the access point. The status LED on the access point will eventually light up green, uh, showing that the access point is being managed by the SRX. Okay, so let's do some verification here. Let's do show PoE. Okay, and that's showing us that we've got uh, PoE set up on port GE001. Okay, and the LEDs um, have changed, you know, lit up and, and changed to the uh, proper status on the device. So let's do a little bit more verification. Let's run the uh, show interfaces command, and then I'll explain a few more things. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for, for branch SRXs in the uh, SRX200 line, and again, I'm using an SRX210 in this demo, uh, the factory default settings uh, establish a VLAN, which consists of, uh, of all the, uh, the built-in ports, except interface GE000. And by default, GE00 is uh, set up as a DHCP client and is in the untrust zone, whereas the rest of the interfaces are uh, in the trust zone and are set up as DHCP server. So these ports all have the, uh, have the family setting of Ethernet switching. Uh, the VLAN has a logical interface that has uh, an IP address and belongs to the trust zone, and uh, DHCP is enabled for the VLAN. Okay, so access points connected to these ports operate in uh, layer two management mode, 
by default. Okay, so let's uh, let's check connectivity because the LEDs are where we need them to be on the uh, AX411. So next we can check that the uh, connectivity has actually been established. So I can use my Windows laptop that I'm using here to see if uh, we've got connectivity to this AX411. And you can use a laptop computer or other wireless device uh, to view the uh, available uh, wireless networks. Okay, so let's take a look at our available wireless networks. Okay, with a quick refresh, you can see the Juniper dash default network. That's what we're looking for. Uh, you should find a security enabled network with the uh, Juniper dash default name as its uh, SSID. Now we can connect to this network, so let's go and select it and click connect. Okay, and when prompted uh, for a security key, and this is a, a WPA2 PSK security key. Let me put display characters on here so you can see what I'm typing. You want to use Juniper dash wireless, all lowercase, as that security key. Let's go ahead and click connect. Okay, and this will take a, a few seconds here to get this uh, particular laptop to connect to the uh, Juniper uh, default network. Okay, there we go. Successfully connected to the Juniper dash default network. Okay, so if you've gone through the, the basic tasks that I performed here, the AX411 status LED is a steady green, and you can detect and connect to the uh, Juniper dash default wireless network on a laptop or other Wi-Fi device, then you have uh, successfully completed the initial configuration of an AX411. Okay, so for your reference on uh, this slide, I'm showing the default configuration settings for an AX411 access point, and you can see the uh, security key listed here, lowercase juniper-wireless that we had to enter. You can see the uh, default SSID, which is uh, juniper-default. And for more information on the, uh, the AX411, you can take a look at the tech technical documentation, which is available with the link shown on the screen. So use that as a starting point for uh, finding more info on the AX411. And uh, that's the end of this presentation. I hope you found this Learning Byte helpful. Be sure to check out the Learning Byte page uh, frequently because we're adding new Learning Bytes all the time. And thank you for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.